Now let's talk about surface modification. If you still remember in chapter 4, we did a review on surface characterization techniques like XPS, SCA, and SIMS, and these techniques allow us to know what's on the surface of a substrate or a material in terms of composition, structure, and topography. Now with that information, we're able to determine whether the surface of our material is suitable for its intended use before you put it inside a biological system. You know, you're able to consider things like, is it too hydrophilic, too hydrophobic, or is there anything you'd like to add on the surface before you put it inside the body? If the answer to that question is yes, then there are several surface modification techniques that we, that we can do. So basically, once you know, you know what's on the surface, so if you want to modify it, you can do things like grafting, where you add this fuzzy layer on top of it, or you can do coating, you can do gradient coating, you can roughen up the surface doing surface roughening, or you can create a specific pattern on the surface using patterning, or you can add multi-layer films on the surface. So for today's topic, we're just going to focus only on the patterning part of surface modification. Now if you take a look at the untreated substrate, you can see at the surface it is perfectly flat with no added material on top of it. So let's say you want to make, you want to make the surface appear something like this. This is called patterning. You create a specific pattern on the surface of the material and the way you can do this is through lithography, you have direct writing, self-assembly and 3D patterning. So for today's discussion, we'll just be focusing on the lithography method, specifically on microcontact printing. So first, let's define what microcontact printing is. So microcontact printing is basically the transfer of ink in a very small pattern, a micro size, from a stamp onto another surface. So basically, so you have a stem has a specific pattern on it and for, and for this case you can see the sole sign that's on the stem surface. Let's say we want to transfer this pattern on the surface of a piece of paper. So what we do is we press it on an ink pad. Then the ink will stick on the pattern of the stem and from there you can press the stem on a piece of paper and now the sole pattern is transferred onto the paper. So microcontact printing works the exact same way. You have a stem or your template which you can design on your own and our paper in this case would be our substrate or our material. The ink would be the particles or the self-assembled monolayer, the stem, which can be transferred to our material through the action of the stem. Hence, as we talked about earlier, we can add a specific pattern on the flat, flat surface of the material that we had earlier. Now let's go into the specifics of the microcontact process. What we have at first is this thing called a master, which is uh, usually a silicone or, let me get back there, silicone or it can be any solid pattern surface. The master is not the stem, but it is the template that we use to make the stem. So because of that, our master would have the reverse shape of the stem since it is a template used to make the stem, not the actual stem. So after we create the master, what we do is we'll place the master in a walled container, let's say in a petri dish. So next we'll pour a solution of PDMS or polydimethylsiloxane, which is the solution used to make the stem. We will pour that solution into the petri dish. So PDMS is actually a silicone that's an elastomer. So elastomer is basically a polymer with, a, with elastic properties. So this PDMS would be the material used to make our stem. So once we pour it, you can see that the PDMS stem will start to form on the master. So once it starts to form on the master, we'll leave it for a while at certain temperature for it to harden. So once it hardens, we'll peel it and cut it off from the master to obtain the PDMS stem. Now that we have the PDMS stem, we need to dip it in our ink or the substance that we want to add to the surface of our material. Our ink in this case would be the thiol solution. So there are two ways you can add the thiol into, onto the PDMS surface. First, you can use the ink pad where you just dip the PDMS stem onto it 
or another way would be you can just pour the ink solution onto the PDMS surface and in both cases you would end up with these tire molecules or the ink sticking on the surface of our PDMS stem. So now that we have the PDMS stem with the tile ink on it, so let's consider a material with a layer of silver on its surface and we wish to pattern the surface of this material. So before that, as you can see here, the tile molecule, or as we call it, the one hexadecane tile, has a tail called the hexadecane and the sulfur or tile head. So these heads would be the one that will attach to the silver surface of the material. So now what we can do, we can bring our stem towards the silver surface. And this action would leave the tile molecules on the silver surface according to the pattern that uh, we desired. So um, once these tile molecules uh, have been attached on the silver surface, it will create a regions that we call as the protected regions. So to finish this process, it would be desirable to remove the unprotected regions of the silver surface. And to do this, we need to add an etching solution. So a silver etching that is usually a strong acid or a modern that can remove the unprotected regions. So once these unprotected parts have been removed, we finally obtain the surface with the pattern that we wanted earlier. Before we end this video, let's take a look at some of the applications of microcontact printing. So first, you can uh, use self-assembled monolayers or SAMs to pattern the surface. You know, like as we talked about earlier, we can maybe use uh, a SAM like the tile molecules. Then, uh, apart from the tile or the SAMs, you can use proteins to coat your surface, to create a pattern on your surface. So for example, maybe you can use polylysine solution, a protein as the ink. So what you can do is you transfer milliliter of these protein dots onto a surface like surfaces like glass, polystyrene, or a hydrophobic silicone. Also, you can pattern your surface with DNA, like maybe you want to step, maybe you want to attach a DNA ranging from 20 BP oligonucleotides to 1,600 BP PCR fragments. And for this case, um, the most common, one of the more common surfaces that you can use is aminated glass using micrometer resolution. So that's about it on microcontact printing. Thank you for watching our video.